Hello, and this is chapter 6. This chapter will talk about the Rust tools. The main Rust tools are the Arvis, the 3D visualization tool, and the RQT, the Rust GUI development tool. We'll learn about what are they and how can we use them. In the previous chapter, we saw what kind of development tools are provided by Rust, but we didn't go so deeply. So let's dive into Arvis. Arvis can visualize the sensor data especially onto the 3D space, such as the distance data of the laser scanner, the point cloud data from the depth camera such as RealSense, the image data of the camera, and the inertia data of IMU sensor. And also, Arvis can show the model of the robot if the model is described in URDF. Or you can move it to Gazebo as well. Navigation runs well in the Arvis. It can show the map drawn by SNAP and locate 3D model of the robot onto the map. When it receives goalposts, and if the navigation algorithm gives the path data to the Arvis, the Arvis draws the path on the map. Manipulation runs also well in the Arvis. If there is a URDF of joint-based robot, Arvis can show every joint's DF, and also it provides a 3D marker for pose control. And also, the teleoperation, or so-called remote control, is enabled in Arvis. So from now, we'll watch some videos to know how it works. So what we are going to see in this video is related with RGBD camera or 3D depth camera. The camera we know in general is a 2D camera which gathers only the RGB data from the plane like this. But this camera can show the distance of every point of the object as a point cloud data, and so the final extension becomes PCD. There are a few kinds of cameras that can do that, like the Kinect from Microsoft, and Action from Asus, the RealSense from Intel, or AudioCam from WithRobot. And this is a scene of Arvis settings. It actually ran the camera already. And now it shows the result. You can see the red color on the screen. That means the small distance to the camera. And the wall behind, the purple, means that it is far from the camera. Now you can compare between two images, which is far or which is near. As you can see, Arvis can visualize the distance sensor. And next video will show the 2D LiDAR, the 2D laser scanner. Here uses Hokuyo's LiDAR sensor. It emits and receives the laser in one channel, and it calculates the distance for each angle. So you can get the point cloud data like these red things. And this is a scene changing the color of the point cloud data. So now you can see the data rotates while the scanner moves on. And from now, it shows that setting the base point where the sensor is. So now the man begins to move, yes. Here something moves on the screen is the thigh. 
and now the chair moves. And this clip is showing IMU sensor, the inertia measurement unit. The robot uses this sensor and specially drawn needs this. As you can see, the IMU pose is being described as TF in the Arvis. And this shows the result from Intel RealSense R200. The image on the left side shows the color distance data. And the image on the right above shows the RGB data. And the image on the right bottom shows the row distance data. It actually has infrared emitter and receiver, so you can consider this camera as a laser scanner. Now this shows the result of motion capture. The screen is a little bit hard to see, but the sensor is installed on the top of the robot. The Kinect from the Microsoft was able to get the location of every point's joint so the computer can estimate the point where the man points out to the ground. Then the robot moves to the point. So this clip shows that Arvis can not only visualize the raw sensor data, but also the process data. And this clip shows that the Arvis can visualize all the model of the object by using their URDF. And so, you can research kind of algorithm of the robot in the simulation. This clip shows one of the key functions in robotics, the navigation. The robot, which moves in the map, is called Total 3 Burger. It moves by getting the goalpost, which is drawn as a red arrow. And during the navigation, Arvis shows the path and the obstacles near the robot. And here, the screen on the left side shows the image from the camera. So you can control the robot while seeing the camera's view. And here's the scene of manipulation. You can put the model into the Arvis and control it by moving the 3D marker. It shows the simulation of the movement, and even it gives the post data via message communication, so you can control the real one at the same time. And this is a scene captured from the video that shows Arvis in Derp Robotics Challenge. Here the Arvis was used for teleoperation or monitoring the robot. So, Arvis can do these kind of data visualization for a various purpose. If you install the ROS by the online ROS installation, you don't need to install the Arvis manually. But if you didn't install with it, you can get the package by ROS Kinetic Desktop full installation or download the ROS Kinetic Arvis. Then, let's run the Arvis. Here we will run at first the ROS core, then ROS run the Arvis. If you enter the comment like this, if the Arvis is successfully installed in your computer, then the screen will show this window. Here are some description of the things in window. The first one, the 3D view, will show images if you set the camera, or it will show point cloud data if you set range sensor. The second is the display. This provides some options of the item you have added. The third is the menu. That has file save or something which is very common. The fourth is the RVS tools. There are some tools. But when you are going to run a mobile robot, you will use 2D post estimate and 2D nav goal. 2D post estimate button 
is for setting the robot's location where they must be in the map. And 2D Nav Goal button is for setting the robot's goalposts in the map. Both will be shown as a red arrow. The fifth is a view. When you want to see the environment from the top, you can change the view by selecting the type. The sixth is the simulation time. But the most important thing you should understand is the display. If you are going to use the lighter, you will add laser scan display so that the 3D view can show the laser scan data on the screen. If you are going to use the 3D death camera, then you will add point cloud display so that the 3D view can show the 3D depth data on the screen. So these options can be thought as up to the data. Usually, the researchers or students used to make the extra tools for data visualization. It's because they should show the results and the data of the experiments to professors the viewers. So half of the time is spent by making what is not related with the research. But if you can use Ross and Arvis, you can focus on what you were going to do. This is the idea of why Arvis was made. And from now, we'll look at the RQT. RQT means basically something made with ROS QT. QT is kind of IDE, and this is usually used for making GUI. So RQT provides many tools made as GUI-based program. There are many kinds of RQTs, but some of them were merged with the RQT, so you can use them as a plugin of RQT. And there are some most often used plugins like RQT Image View and Graph, Plot, and Back. The RQT Image View will show a camera image or video stream. The RQT Graph will show the net of how the nodes are connected. The RQT Plot will show the figures, and the RQT Back will show the stream of the ROS Back. The RQT must be already installed in your computer if you installed the ROS. But if your computer couldn't find it, then install it by typing following. RQT is very easy to run, and you can add a plugin that you want to see. And here's the descriptions of each plugins in RQT. So if you are interested in some plugins, see the descriptions. And this is an example of how to use the RQT. Some people use RQT as a browser. Some people publishes the topic, I mean send specific data via topic message. And some people use GUI environments for robot steering. And some people use RQT for debugging. You can add the plugins describing the previous page to the single RQT window. Then let's have a practice with RQT image view. So the first step we'll usually run is the ROS core. And then you should run the UVC camera node. Then the camera inside your laptop or the extra camera will start running. And we are now going to see what kind of image the uh, camera node is sending by putting the RQT. If you are running the RQT as new, then it will show the default monitor. Now you should add the plugins. What we are going to see is an uh, image. So let's go to the visualization and go to the image view. If the camera node runs perfectly, then you will find a topic like these. Select one of them so that you can get the image data. 
And this is second practice that uses RQT graph. Now we will run only the total simulation node and total teleoperation keyboard node, and then run the RQT and add the node graph. We have already run the UVC camera node and RQT image view. So you can see four nodes. Two topic communication between them is happening now. The RQT graph will show the node which is running, and even the topic, if there is a topic communication between the nodes. The third is RQT plot. This shows the data encapsulated to the topic message. Let's open the RQT plot and enter the arrow key to move the toggle. The fourth is RQT back. We know that Rossback records the topic message data. So if he records the video stream and check the recorded data by RQT back node, we can see what it does. So the RQT and the plugins are very useful tools in the robot development. You can customize and make your monitoring table and use it. The next is Gazebo. This chapter describes what is Gazebo. The way how to use Gazebo will be talked in both the chapter of the mobile robot and the chapter of May Later. The Gazebo is a 3D simulator with powerful physics engine. Robots model and sensor the environment model can be applied to the simulation space. This uses ODE, the Open Dynamics engine, and the Blitz, Simbot, and Dart. So you can select one of them. This is a good point since where those are good at are very different. Like one of them is strong in statics, another one is strong in dynamics, one another is strong in hydrodynamics and so on. So you can get the data similar to the one in real environment. Gazebo is very famous because it is an open source, not a product. When the gazebo becomes an utility in the ROS, the performance was not good. But when the gazebo was chosen as an official simulator for DARPA Robotics Challenge, they've got so much feedbacks from brilliant engineers. And also founded by DARPA, the gazebo was so much improved. In the gazebo, you can put the sensors into the model of the robot. You can add a fake camera for example and also set the field of view, then the model will have a real camera in the simulation space. It will publish as the camera image topic, and so you can see the image by RQT image view, and something like that. You can even put the noise into the image input, like Gaussian noise. This can simulate the real environment. It uses the URDF, and it supports cloud simulation environment, you can access to another PC, connect to Gazebo which is run in that PC, and make a linkage. We'll see how it can be used through this video. And this is a video compilation that shows Gazebo simulation of ROS enabled robots. The humanoids The drones the UAVs, the modulars, the mobile robot, service robots, and even connected with virtual reality system. And also even you can first prototype a robot in simulation, then you can make a real robot which guarantees its functionality. So there are very good functions in the gazebo. Use the gazebo in your work.